Jamie Brignon will take the 74th running of the Manitoba Derby. The Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. And welcome everybody to ASD Live brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, Day 46 on the racing calendar let's take a look back at well monday's okay. racing action as we were smoked out yesterday the hot jockey fraser abley he had the natural hat trick winning three on the card and chavi and chow also had two wins but antonio whitehall and demario bino both had wins on the card and antonio still up by 11 on the trainer's side Jerry Gorno up by eight with seven race days to go stretch. Well, what did you see on the track on Monday? Monday, yeah, let's do a quick comment on that. I thought it was a, a very neutral track. It, it was uh, nothing like we have fast tracks from a few weeks ago and especially a month ago. Uh, even had uh, one length slow on a couple ones there. We, we saw that uh, you could come from all over the place. Some horses went gate to wire. Some came from the clouds and, and basically got a fast closing second. And so if the race was a little bit longer, they could have won it. So I think it was a, a completely uh, a fair track all over. Uh, quick, because of the smoked out day, we're going to go, which is uh, bad news yesterday, good news to finish yeah. off the meet. We're going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the last two weeks. So add the 13th, which we've already mentioned, and now add the 20th. As Kurt just mentioned to me, so we've got after today, we've got six more. So two full weeks action. Two full weeks. That's three show parlay contests. And and now let's get to the big news today. Kurt, did you know? Well, of course you knew. I told you. And, and we did. <laughs> today is our two hundredth ASD live show. Really stretch? Two hundred? Two hundred. We got balloons. Look at that. Wow. wow. And I'm not sick of you yet. Are you <laughs> no, sick of me? Not yet. Okay, not, I just check yeah, it. Yeah, I, it's just looking back uh, and we started this show in the May of twenty twenty at the end of the uh, or the start of the pandemic, there were no fans allowed and, and uh, management uh, thought let's take the show or take the track to you because you couldn't attend and, and uh, great job on the production crew to make a makeshift studio and, and, and that was on the third floor in the corner. We had that going on. So and that me was running up and down the up stairs. Up and down. <laughs> you, you were never in as good shape as you ever were. I know. Um, I'm a little rounded now in these days. <laughs> because you have 20 steps to get to the thing. The, From room uh, to room. Yeah, and just to kind of look back, uh, did you know that I'm at 170 stretch change alerts? Yeah, right. And, and that's, that's, <laughs> I, I want you to call on that. Uh, you, you can give us a little uh, heads up. I'm sure it's about 400. Well, somewhere around there. Who, who's keeping <laughs> count? Uh, you have a few less than that. And then full credit to the production crew. Get, now we have our own studio in here. Over the last, uh, nobody thought we were getting to 200, or we didn't think. Oh, definitely not. Uh, we have our special weather report each week or each night, which is interesting. We've added story time with Stretch, story t or math class with Stretch. There's Stre a lot of Stretch stuff in Stretch there. mocking. Kurt on his, on his picks, and then Kurt. Well, here's about Kurt and his Wednesday show parlay skills. So awesome, awesome, it, unblemished, I, unblemished. Did, did I miss anything? No, I don't think you did. But stretch. I just want to say from day one, you were green coming on. You had the enthusiasm, but the camera wasn't your friend. But now, stretch. Awesome job, buddy. You've well, come a long way. Well, thank you very much, and and. Uh, you, you make it easy to do. But also, we've got to thank the fans. I can speak on behalf of Kurt for sure. This wouldn't be continuing if we didn't have people tuning in and wagering on the races. So it And enjoying it. Yeah, and, may, and it makes it certainly fun for us. If uh, Hopefully, you can see that in the show. So uh, we've got, uh, like I said, we've got a, a good sequence uh, in the pick four and pick five today. Great Lots sequence. of horses, so uh, we better get started. All right, let's kick it off with a $5,500 claimer. For Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and up, they're going to go six furlong stretch. What do you have? Okay, uh, compact field. Uh, it's between my top two picks. It's all about, I agree. Uh, it's about the race shape. And I think uh, 
if there's a bit of a battle up front, then it can kind of set it up for the five. I think the 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 five has been running well all year. Uh, this is her this is her level. She gets she's been sitting closer uh, this year. We used to be so far back she couldn't get up. So if the pace comes back a little bit, she can get there. There's a couple of races she actually went close to the lead. So uh, I think if it's a slow pace, she won't be that far. Try to make a late run. Um, the the two is the horse that uh, certainly can beat beat the five. That depends if this horse is going to battle early with the one. And if it does, it might make that early move and get the jump on the five and kind of turn the tables from a, a few races ago. So I think it's those two. You want to talk about the top two? Yeah, I'm with you. Kim Sex is playing the last two times, going six furlongs for 5,500. Won both of them easy, but didn't catch the leaders till inside the 16th pole. But she is real solid at this level. Cyclone Sorority, this is the one that's going to be sitting a little bit closer I think Arpetunia, the one, has some speed. But Cyclone Sorority doesn't need the lead. It can stalk and pounce. And that's why I ended up taking it on top. I like those horses that have the first shot at the leaders. You don't have to hold your breath with your closer coming real late. But uh, I agree with you. The top two are two and five. And, and then let's go to the three. This horse has showed a bit of signs on this. And if, depending on the race shape, maybe there's a... a, a Two and one and two battle, five moves early. This may be the upset. If you take a look at this horse, this horse won three times in September, so maybe September is her month. It would be a big upset, but I'll go five, two, three. Yeah, I agree with you. Late closer in here, and I'm two, five, and three. All right, we're going to carry on to race number two, a $7,500 claimer. Four, three year olds and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Scratch number one, Stone Cafe. Scratch number two, Unbroken Star. And with those scratches, delete Triactor, Superfecta, and there will be no show wagering stretch. Compact field, same horses. You've got a free bingo space on your show today. Yeah, I <laughs> totally do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, with a couple of scratches, but you make the best of it. It's an interesting race because of the top two races. You've got our top two horses. Sorry, you've got... You've got Caribou moving up. Uh, that's got five wins, and and I think this horse is probably going to be a, the claimer of the year to win Definitely five. Huge. And, and even if it runs a, a game second, still should be there. I am going to go with the horse with the no-win horse simply because uh, he can control the front end. He hasn't been able to do that with the other uh, other races. Always had some other classier speed. Can go out and try to basically go gate to wire. Absolute massive drop in here. And I said I like horses that finish within five lengths. Did run seventh last time out going a mile in the second level allowance. But only got beat by five and a half in the end. Takes the massive drop in here. Why not? They think the horse will get claimed. You get the money on top of it for the purse. And you come away with about sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 to buy new ones as it is the end of the year. So I really like it's that time to go all the way. Yeah, but I and I agree with you completely. Now I wouldn't be surprised if the Caribou went, ran his best race last lifetime, and the figures are good enough to put this horse right with the five. And being game as he is, you got to watch out. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he upset, but still my second choice. So I'm, I'm five. Four. Yeah, only one bad race, and uh, that was going two, two turns. turns. The seven furlongs. This horse is five for five. I expect it to run second in here, and Lucky Luke rounds it out. This horse won't show speed today, but will be sitting close. I think it's that time. It's just way faster, but I think it's just going to be picking up the pieces in the end. So both me and Stretch have five, four, and three. Now we're going to carry on to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five, wagering with a $3,000 claimer for Phillies and Mayors, three and up that are non-winners of the year. They're going to tackle the mile distance stretch. Who do you like? Well, we've got five or six in here that really aren't on form and haven't haven't really won, haven't won this year. I'll go to the uh, horse that has won this year and had a nice second last time. The, the tricky part on the six, though, is she was in condition races, and if she had raced in the open races, she would have probably finished very similar to the other ones in here, just based on the numbers. But she did win. She was trying to win again, and so just she's going to have the most gameness that she. For me, she looks like she can be there. It's my top pick, but not a gut for me. Yeah, I agree with you. Those wins and uh, that race three outs ago against the boys in the open non two, that was a really tough race against the Lona Ranger, who came back to win on Monday and rigged right. 
who came back to run a very game second in the non-three condition. So I like Anna Kazana, but I like you. Yes, by a nod. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got the reverse for, for second and third. I'll start with the two. I thought this horse woke up la last time uh, showing some speed. I also like the horses only had four starts this year. There's kind of more room that the, po the horse could be on the upside instead of racing all year without a win. And so that was, that's, that's why I have the two slightly ahead of the one. Uh, it's a bit of a guess with, with these horses. Like I said, they're, whoever wakes up or, or wants to run certainly can win the race. But I'll go 6-2. And then I'll mention the one. Showed early pace last time. I uh, was running at a higher claiming level. Uh, it runs back to the Turf Paradise race. It certainly can be there. So for me, it's a 6-2-1 in a very careful type race. Yeah, I expect number one steamer to go to the front just like last time out. But now we'll be on the inside. I think that'll be a huge advantage for steamer. And it was a wake-up race. The horse had a couple of races that weren't too bad underneath, but took the drop to the bottom, ran huge. I expect a big effort again today. And the two wit nine, usually coming off the pace, but went to the front unusually last time out. Not sure what Fraser Abley is going to do, but he did win three on Monday. So whatever he does, expect this horse to run. And I'm giving you six, one, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number four, a $3,000 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, that are non-winners of the year. They're going five and a half furlongs. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering stretch. Who do you like? All right, good. What a sequence for a pick four. I, I don't see a, a small payout today, even if there's chalk that went across. Okay, uh, let, let's go. Uh, most of the horses haven't won this year. The two that have the, the one win have, have just won in the last six months, but uh, not recent. I'm going to take a chance here and try to beat the big favorite. The the three uh, the the three was uh, basically makes makes a class drop racing in the non four against horses that have won and so the claim so you have to be careful understand the conditions it's also a money drop too but that five non four there's some pretty good ones in there so um, started out was basically in another time zone watch the replay and the horse finished with some run and I think if this horse sits a little bit closer which you it usually does. Certainly can be right there. I think it's a fair pace, or you should get a really fair price in here. Uh, six is obviously the horse to beat, is the best on paper. Figures say the horse should win. Back-to-back -back seven, uh, second place uh, finishes. I, I, I think you're just not going to get any value. And then a little bit of concern is the horse has been off a month. And so it's just enough that a horse that's going off at $3, I, I've got to try to, it's going to certainly make the, the pick for pay. But you obviously can't leave them out. And then uh, I am mentioning the five for the very, very, very last time, Kurt. I, I wasn't going to put, I was not going to put the horse in. I was going to put your four in there for sure. But I have to put that, mention this horse because, well, I've been mentioning it all season long. And it, the horse shows some speed. But anyway, let's go talk about the five. I showed speed last time and faded, expecting to try the lead again. Um, is is making the the drop in class and and maybe if it gets the lead it can kind of keep going and and it would be another big price and a protection to have the five up there but three and six and I have to take the five out of principle. Yeah, I, well I'm going to number six, Lucky Break. This horse has run absolutely huge the last two outings. I liked showing speed last time out and getting caught by Will Nose late down the lane. Will Nose came back with a stinker in the next one. But on Monday, ran absolutely huge, ran a really game second. So I think lucky break. A day is the day drop into the bottom. Not much value, but I think the horse is a winner. I did go back to number seven, Warbridge. Surprised he didn't take it stretch. <laughs> no, I, I, you I had did. Warbridge I last did. time I out. Did. And I really liked the way he ran. He actually woke up, which, uh, you know, he's been sleeping all season. And I've been taking him, didn't take him last time. And I said, okay, well, maybe he's one of those fall horses in September. He wants to run. And so I'm taking a shot on him. I expect him to sit just off the front end, probably about third or fourth, make a late run. And number four, towards the light, has been running well in each and every outing. Good second last time out. The rebounder who was an easy winner. So I'm giving you six, seven, and four. Now we're carrying on to race number five, a maiden allowance race. Four, three-year-olds and up. They're going to go six furlongs. 
a little bit of a mixed bag of boys and girls. It is. It is a tough race, a main race to figure out. I'm ignoring your top pick on, on that. And oh, you, yes, you, you, you are. <laughs> I knew you but were. But you're going to know why I, this I, time. I, I'm gonna, uh, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be the same why the last six. But anyway, let's talk <laughs> about this. Let's, uh, you know what? I've actually written down the wrong picks, but I like, let's keep it that oh, way. Oh, okay. It's the reverse order, but that's fine. We're going to keep it 4-7. I'll start with the four because my notes say almost my top selection. This horse ran really uh, a good first race. Uh, she ran huge. She ran, showed early speed, dropped back thinking she, she was done, and then came again. And if again, watching that last eight, it's, once, once she got out, she just absolutely improved. And, and so that's the key there. Also take note of the trainer combo. You might not know that this trainer combo is one for one with the return of $164. <laughs> ah, ah. Arthur Badu. <laughs> yes. Won't, you're not getting 164 on this Definitely one. Definitely not. But uh, should be a price. Got a user. I I'm using both of them. So let's go to the seven. This is another bit of a troubled trip horse. This, um, I bet this horse last time. Big bet. Lost. Uh, am I bitter? Eh, not really. It ha racing happens. The horse got uh, kind of checked out of the gate, shuffled back, and was had just too much to do. And then if it runs back to the races two and three back, then the horse should be right there. You can't get that far back, but there was an excuse. So giving that horse one last chance, and, and the six, needed a I needed a so solid third-place finisher. And I've got a solid <laughs> third-place finisher, nine of 18. Why not again? I'll take that's all I need to say. Nine of 18 third. Go ahead, Kurt. Talk yeah, about well, your, yep. the six horse, yeah, a lot of seconds and thirds. Hasn't missed the board this year. But the difference in this race, there is no early speed to be found anywhere. Fraser Abley, he was on the horse last time out. Didn't get out of the gate well as it was post position number one. And he ended up rallying really nicely to run third and getting beat by number three. No, I won't back down. So I think finalized, just goes straight out to the front today. Please catch me if you can. And I don't think they're going to today, but I uh, fought that in the past. <coughs> Third. <laughs> and I also like number three. No, I won't back down. This horse has run some really good races two outs ago. The horse was pressing the front end and ended up running a good fourth behind He's a Doozy, who ended up coming back to win the second level or, or the allowance non-two lifer in the very next start. Last time out, sat dead last after breaking from the outside. Made a good charge down the lane. I expect to be sitting a little bit closer. So I'm going to give it a good shot. And I did take number seven, Viral. A better break out of the gate today. He'll put the horse in a better position. Was sitting on a win with those back-to-back -back seconds. Maybe today's the day. But I'm taking six, three, and seven. Now we're carrying on to race number six, a $5,500 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to go seven and a half furlongs. Mm -hmm. Stretch, what about this one? All right, very good race uh, to watch and try to figure out. A tough race to cap, actually. Um, I like your top selection, but I'll start with the one. I was trying to find somebody to beat this horse, but I just think that the race shape and the figures, I just keep coming back to them. I, I'm taking others in here, but this horse should get such a good trip and just make that um, move. This horse, uh, for the level of in interest, uh, the Dino race back on, on uh, the last time this horse ran and he lost by three was the fastest race run for, for the 5,500 level of the year. So th hence why Dino then came back and won the next one just because of how good that race was. So again, uh, on paper looks good, runs back to that race, could be tough to beat or should be tough to beat. I'd like your eight. I'll, I, I, this horse has been running really well so far. Um, and it's just uh, keeps going. Made a nice close last time. I like that. Just can't get too far, can't get wide and lose too much ground. This horse is a good horse, but if it doesn't get the trip, it's going to make it that much tougher to beat the one. How about talk about your eight? Yeah, I see some pace in here with the five lab rat, the six rig right, and even club champ can be up in the fray early. So there is a lot of pace, I think, that's going to happen. North Fork has improved with each and every start. Three outs ago, did win the non four lifer. Getting up to win by a head over Lucky Luke, who was the massive favorite that day. Then couldn't beat Dino, but Dino came back to win. But it ran so much better running that second. I think this horse is still just running so good and running fresh. So I think it's going to be a big rallier down the lane, and you're going to get a good price. And I do like number five, Labrat. 
If nobody else goes to the front end, Labrat, when he did get his win for 7,500, he was loose on the front, got collared, but battled back every step of the way to the wire, and that was real gutsy. So I think it's one of these horses that has to make the lead, and if he does, he can go all the way. And I do like X Checker, draws the rail in here. Also got beat by Dino, who's the hot one at the 55 level. So I'm going to give you eight, five, and one. I'm going to talk about my two. Are you going to talk I, about I, your let two? Let me talk about the two. Back, okay, back it, talk back, about the two Back stretch. it up, Adam. Back it up. Back it up. Ah. We're not done with race six. Well, he's got to talk about club champ. Okay. I do. Okay, I'll talk. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Um, this horse ran so good last time, was actually too good to lose, ran too good to lose. You see who it lost to, Caribou. This horse, I wasn't going to take this horse, but if you look, for 6 to 10 at the distance. So I think this horse, I like, may go to the lead, might get stuck in the duel, but I like if this horse can get the trip on the rail. So that's a bit of the price horse. May forget about that one. So 182 for stretch. Now we can go to the 7. All right, on to race number 7. We have an allowance optional $15,000 claimer. Four three-year-old fillies are going to go six furlongs. Scratch number eight, the Comrie rule. Stretch, what a great race. It is a great race to end the, the week. Ends up to be a short week. A very competitive race to close it out. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the four. I watched it again. Uh, last time, uh, this horse was closer, closer than usual. And then it, it looks like the horse... Um, wanted to run early, then dropped back, got shuffled, and then finished again. So I, I like that move. I'm just kind of hoping this horse will sit uh, sit back and make the one run instead of trying to do the double run. It's just sometimes how the race shapes up, and if the jockey thinks this horse has so much horse, just kind of go. Horse is going to gonna need a trip. You're going to get a nice price, though. So I had to just include it on, on kind of my trip-type horses. And then let's go to the two as my uh, second selection. Uh, two and three races back, this horse uh, was solid. I like two back that the horse chased and then took over. Last time out, just lost to a slightly better mare. Melisandra belongs. Run. She's she's good enough to run with the best uh, fillies and mare on the track. So Yeah, she would destroy this field. There's cor- no doubt correct. about it. Correct. So uh, gets the cut back. I've noticed this horse can stalk, but if this horse, if they give this horse any bit of a lead, then watch out. Then, then you saw how good she is there. And then I'll, I'll go back to the six. This horse was a long shot. I'm not a big fan to be late to the party on, on, on uh, when they paid so much. But I watched the race. Great ride. The horse sat off and just no reason to get the, not get the same trip. So has beat many of these. I've got to go back to back. I could go back to get back. Let's go four, two, and six. Yeah, I'm going to take a shot. That lady cop does get beat. It will be the big favorite in here, and deservedly so. But I went to number five, Diamond Grand. I was waiting for this horse to go back sprinting. Went before it arrived at the downs and went in the stakes races. It blew the doors off. A minute 10 on two lifer. Easily winning by five. Last time out did make a good late run down the lane. But it was a little belated. I think the horse can be in a better position. And with the field of nine with that scratch, there is going to be trouble in here. So it's always good to have the top jock on. And I'm liking the price, the early morning line at 20 to 1. Lady Cop, as I said, deserves to be the favorite. And I threw in number seven, I've got all night. They had a tongue tie on today. Debut winner looked awesome. Then in the Manitoba Oaks, ran a little bit of a stinker in there. But the comeback race, the horse ran really good as it didn't make the front end, but still stayed along. And I love speed horses that do that. If Lady Cop and Russian Pearl, they don't go to the lead, and I've got all night. Gets loose again. She could be gone. So I'm going to take five, two, and seven. Good luck with all your wagers this evening. I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing.
And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes. On this evening's seven race car to racing, turning your programs to race number one, just a couple overweights, and they're on your monitors. Now turning your programs to race number two, the ideal night for racing, scratch number one, Stone Cafe, and scratch number two, Unbroken Star. And with those scratches, delete Superfecta, Try Actor, and there will be no show wagering. Now turning your programs to race number three, kicking off jackpot, pick five, wagering the Ball Insurance Agency race. Number six, Anna Kazana. The claiming price should read $3,750. The jackpot pick five carryover, just over $66,000. Now turning your programs to race number four, the Hodson Financial Race. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. There are no changes. Now turning your programs to race number five, our VIP Fan of the Night Race. Just some overweights, and they're on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs to race number six, our first of two classic high five races. Again, just a couple overweights. Now turning your programs to race number seven, our other classic high five race, scratch number eight, the Comrie Rule. Well, an absolutely gorgeous evening for racing. Here in Winnipeg, I'll stretch. We got a cake. We got that's a lot of candles, but I'll take well, the candles. For I'm sure. old, so <laughs> I, I, I'm used good. to lots of candles. <laughs> Under sunny skies, the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius or 62 Fahrenheit. The wind light out of the northeast at nine kilometers an hour or six miles an hour, and the track is listed as fast. Fast race track for this evening. Seven race car to racing. We're going to kick it off right here in race number one that goes to post in 19 minutes. And welcome to Cinnaboy Downs. Be sure to enter your name for a chance to be our VIP Fan of the Night. Ballots are available in the lobby. If your name is picked, you're going to get the VIP treatment, including a $25 wagering voucher. You're going to get an ASD t-shirt. Get to come up to the press box, watch me call a race, go down to the paddock and see the horses, and you're off to the winner's circle to get a framed photo with the winning horse now on to racing if you're new to racing stop by and see shannon and brad at the fan education center located on the main level they can answer all your questions about how to bet and be sure to download the new app called dark horse bets all new account signups receive a free 30 dollars deposit scan the qr code on the front of your program cover or off of any of the posters around the building to download the app now. Have a great 
evening of racing.
Mr. Bell and Paddock for race number one. Kick it off the Wednesday night car to racing with the $5,500 claimer for Phillies and Mares, three year olds and up. We're going to go six furlong stretch. Who do you got? Okay, well, let's start with the five. There we go, right in front. Julie timed it perfectly. She's obviously on the camera today. Let's start with why Kim Texas Bling. Well, she's been running uh, well all meet long. I always thought she was always a little too far back and at the last year and just couldn't get there. But this year, she's just uh, able to sit that much closer. And that last race impressed me. Going the two turns, was uh, closing late, was actually getting to the winner. And so she's got to go back to her. It's all about the trip for her in the sense that she, she can't get too far back. And if the pace is a little too slow, she might have a tough time getting there. But uh, if, it's, if it's a normal pace up front, she can get there. Yeah, at this $5,500 level, both times sprinting, she did mow them down late uh, to grab both of the wins. I ended up going to number two, Cyclone Sorority. Was beaten by Kim's Texas Bling two outs ago, but had to battle it out every step of the way with by all, and then just ended up tiring late down the lane. There is speed out of number one, our Petunia, but I don't think there's enough to keep Cyclone Sorority busy. She will be up near the front end, and if she can get those soft fractions, as Stretch said, she could be long gone. Yep, uh, absolutely. That, that's the, uh, the one that could be my top selection. Let's go to the three, Miss Parfait. Uh, this horse cuts back, uh, hasn't won this year, but last year at this time of year was winning, was making that move. We cashed um, a bunch of tickets with her last year. She hasn't shown that too much, but a few back, she ran second to Texas Bling, and, and if there is a pace battle, maybe between the one and the two, then she certainly can get there. She does have to step it up a little bit, but this time of year, this might be rounding into that top effort. Another horse to look at, number four, a star to be. Started off the year in good fashion with back-to-back -back wins, but since then has been knocking on the door. But it's running into that's a lot of bling in the last two, and that horse at this level uh, it's tough to beat, especially going around two turns. A star to be has been freshened up since the last start in late July, has been off the month of August, has a good workout coming in in 50 and two. She has a forward running style in here, so she should be sitting third behind the one and the two and maybe just get a dream trip. For sure, and, and the whole key to this race a little bit is the one on how the race is going to go. You look at the last race, you'd be eight beaten 18. You think, wow, that's not very good. Well, take a look at who she was chasing. She was chasing the, the speedy Kate's princess. And she, that's just a little too tough for her. And so that's the type when uh, a need the lead type, that's what happens. They kind of give it up. But if you look back, she, when this, she gets the lead, she's tough. Sure, it was at uh, Fargo in that, but Fargo's been pretty good this year. She was at uh, Fawner. Did lose to Cyclone, but got the lead and, and uh, ran a nice race back there. That's the sneaky one that uh, if they decide to let this horse get loose, may be upset. Yeah, that's a nice double drop into this 5,500. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number one. Stretch, what do you have? Well, to kick off show 200, I needed two bets. Oh. Imagine oh, that. <laughs> big surprise. Is there going to be a change alert, too? Not in the first. Oh, okay. uh, no, Beth's getting the first race off, but there could be six more. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, $10 uh, Kurt bet. I had to get your type of bet in here in honor of you All here. Right. Uh, $10 triangle five with two with three, four. And then, of course, I'm not done yet. Have another 10 bucks lying around. $10 double, five, five. Well, we got lots of money lying around as there was no racing yesterday. So I have a $20 daily double. I'm taking a straight one, two and five. And it's show parlay Wednesday. I am still alive. So I'm happy about that stretch. What do you have? I'll, I'll go to my top pick, 20 uh, show on the five. And I'm going to my top pick also, 20 to show on number two, Cyclone Sorority. Good luck with all your wagers here in race one. And we'll see you back for race two.
the track for race number one. They're going to go six furlongs for $13,200. Number one is R. Petunia, owned by Dion Peterson, trained by Perry Kavanaugh with Ronald Alley. Number two is Cyclone Sorority, owned by All for One Stables, trained by Shelley Brown with Demario Bino. Number three is Miss Parfait, owned by Villa K. Butler, trained by Jennifer Jordan with Nyron Austin. Number four is a star to be, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Rounding out the field is number five, Tim's Texas Bling, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Antonio Whitehall. Post time for race number one in approximately three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls kick off the uh, Wednesday card going six furlongs. It's a good competitive field. I'm going to start with the, the five horse on the outside. She's going to be sitting in the back in about oh, third or fourth, hoping there's a battle up front and make her patented late move. That's what she likes to do. And when she gets going, she can be tough to beat. The problem is if somebody can get loose or slow it down, that could be the two horse. The, she's going to be right near the lead, maybe battling early with the, the one, try to press and take over. She's your second place. A long shot players at... Uh, need maybe a place or show bet that's the three she's going to be sitting in about fourth or fifth and try to make a late run to help make the payouts pay a little bit more so let's go five two and three kurt stretch i do like number two cyclone sorority i don't think there is going to be a big heated pace so cyclone sorority will be sitting very close at every point of the race ran huge three outs ago when beaten by kim's texas bling but battled every step of the way so I think a smoother stocking trip today. I do like number five, Kim's Texas Bling. Two starts, 5,500, going six furlongs. Both of those resulted in wins. 
so she is the one to beat, and I agree with Miss Parfait being a late rallier in here, so I'm going to give you two, five, and three. Good luck here in race number one. Star to B will be the first to enter the starting gate without jockey Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Once a star to B is in, he will climb back aboard. Great job by the gate crew once again. A star to be is in. Next up, our Petunia. Cyclone Sorority walks up and in. Two left to load. Miss Parfait. Now just waiting on Kim's Texas Bling to the outside. A current even money favorite. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, our Petonia. Showing good early speed. And up by a half length early. A star to be on the outside in second. Third on the inside, Cyclone Sorority. In between horses, Miss Parfait and Kim's Texas Bling. The early trailer, but only three off the lead. Our Petunia cuts the opening quarter in a rather sluggish 23 and 2. A star to be still in second on the outside. Cyclone Sorority ridden hard in third. Kim's Texas Bling. Also on the outside in fourth and Miss Parfait the trailer. The half mile 46 and four and our Petunia leads him at the head of the lane by a half a length. A star to be 
has her measured on the outside, and it's these two. A star to be with the best stride late. Here comes Kim's Texas Bling on the far outside. A star to be Kim's Texas Bling. That's too close to call at the wire between a star to be and Kim's Texas Bling. Third will go to Miss Parfait, and fourth to Art Petunia. I've requested a photograph to determine the winning horse. They went the opening quarter 23 and 2, the half 46 and 4, five furlongs 59 and 2. I'm for the six furlongs, one 12 and 4. Well, to the photo, show the winner number five, Kim's Texas Bling. Second goes to number four, a star to be. Third to number three, Miss Parfait. And fourth to number one, R. Petunia. Entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number one, that's number five, Kim's Texas Bling. Kim's Texas Bling is a dark bear brown filly, four years old, by Texas Bling. Out of the mare, I'm a be a wildcat, by the wildcat. Owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, and ridden to victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the six furlongs, one, twelve, and four. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. The ideal night for racing. Scratch number one, Stone Cafe. And scratch number two, Unbroken Star. And with those scratches, there will be no Triactor, Superfecta, or Show Wagering. Post time for race number two, 15 minutes away. Boy Downs has introduced a new Chase the Ace weekly draw. And you can win $5,000 if you're drawn and you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets start at $5 and are available online at asdowns-cta.com 
or here in person at guest services or at the VLT Cashier's Cage. The draw will be made tonight at 9 p.m., so get your tickets now. Proceeds support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, the Manitoba Lung Association, Dream Factory, Mad Winnipeg, the Canadian Mental Health Association, the Manitoba Arthritis Society, the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and Arts, and the ALS Society of Manitoba. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace charity program.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number two. We have a $7,500 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up, they're gonna go six furlongs. Scratch number one, Stone Cafe. Scratch number two, Unbroken Star. And with those scratches, there will be no Superfecta, no Triactor, and no show wagering. Let's take a look back at race number one stretch. Well, Kim's Texas Bling just timed it right. Yeah, Antonio is is uh, riding just so well. Timed it beautifully. The horse got out and just, you could see the how game she has been because she saw the wire and wanted to get there first and just eat, ate up more ground and, and got there. Impressive. Uh, hopefully that's a trend for the, the next uh, six races and how exciting that race was. Yeah, no doubt about it. Okay, on to race number two. Now it's down to a trio of runners stretch. Right now, drop a caribou taking all the early money. That's under, yeah, you can go either direction in the sense of, we talked about it, going to be claiming, should be claimer of the year, just keeps winning at this level. I'll go to the top, the, the five just based on class and, and controlling early pace. The, the key is you, if you know who this horse has been running against all year or the type, you just horse hasn't had a chance to to be relaxing on the front end. And when, when a, a classy horse like this can get the lead, it can get very tough. Now, hasn't won this year. Only four starts, though. Drops to where uh, Michael Nault thinks this horse should uh, kind of air. And, and uh, if the horse runs well, remotely close to anything from last year, it's a 10-length a, a victory. But I don't know if the horse is at that level. But we're going to find out. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is the speed of the race. It's been showing it all year long. And that one race for the uh, optional 20000 that's the third level allowance. The horse ran lights out against Inter Miami and Market King early on. And I didn't even mind that last race, beaten by five and a half, running seventh in that second level allowance against Gall Gallon Oak and Pray for Peace. Let's talk about Drop a Caribou now. Uh, this horse has done no wrong. The only defeat was going around two turns, but uh, every other time, right there. Absolutely, and, and I mentioned on AST Live that this horse's last race was actually his best race. So, going to have to sit relatively close, but he's so game, run above, ran above par for 5,500, so to move up to 75 isn't a big deal. It didn't have such a dropper, then he would be my top selection. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, even last time out, that was a gutsy win over Club Champ. Golden Eye made a belated rally for third. So drop a caribou. It will be in contention early on. And what about number three, Lucky Luke? Tried to go to the front last time out for 7,500, battling. And there wasn't a ton of speed in there. All the speed was route speed. And this horse battled it out, ended up fading in the end. But... The race previous to that against Not Afraid, that was a really good race by Lucky Luke. He's going to have to do that off the pace running. If he's going to bang it out with it's that time, I just don't think he's going to last. No, I agree. I think you're you're chasing and, and trying to take a late run and try to beat beat the five late. So, yeah, it'll be an interesting bit of a cat and mouse game when you've got only three horses, but it'll be a, a fun race to watch. All righty, let's go to our wagers here in race number two stretch. What do you have? I've uh, got just a $20 exactor 5 for keeping it simple. Just leave it at that. And myself, I'm going after the pick three. I'm going to take the five in here. Then I'm going to take the one six and round out with the six. That's $20. That's a $10 ticket. Or you can just bet a ticket for a buck. It's $2. Yeah, it's 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 going to uh, pay. It should pay in there. you got a price horse in there. Let's, uh, good news on the show parlay today. For you. For me, I've got the bingo card, free space coming up. And, yeah, and, and you, I get uh, extra time to go down to the car and grab some change. You got it. So, yeah, a little more time to get the car <laughs> changed. We got the, the free space well, bingo. Oh, that already? Oh, come on. <laughs> free, I got car change. So, just look at the free space, and then Beth did the graphics. That's why we have the best production crew anywhere. They, they can make us look good. Like the, No doubt. They do make they, us look they, good. They do make us look good. All right. All right. Good luck with all your wagers here in race two, and we'll see you back for race three. Kick it off, jackpot, pick five, wagering.
the track for race number two, the ideal night for racing. They're going to go six furlongs for $14,800. Number one, Stone Cafe was scratched. Also, number two, Unbroken Star scratched. Number three is Lucky Luke, owned and trained by Don Senebald with Siobhan Bell. Number four is Drop a Caribou, owned by All for One Stables, trained by Shelley Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Rounding out the compact field is number five, It's That Time, owned by True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Chavi and Chow. The ideal night for racing. Here in race number two, they'll go to post in approximately three minutes. And ladies and gentlemen, in this, the second race, we have our HVPA Manitoba best turned out horse, and that is number five. It's that time. It's that time. The HVPA Manitoba best turned out horse here in race number two. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys going six furlongs. I think it's a bit of a match race between the four and the five. The four's been winning a lot of races and should just sit off. The five is just a classier horse, just won a lot of races last year. This year, just not quite the same level, but won't have pressure early. Should go to the lead, slow it down, and just kind of keep going. Four is a game horse, five wins this year, so it'll be right down to the wire between the two of them. So I'm going to go five and four in noses at the wire. Kurt? Also, like number five, it's that time. Massive drop in class from the second level allowance. Cuts back in distance, has early speed, and the Michael Nolt Chavi and Chow combo has been absolutely on fire. I expect to go to the lead and take it all the way. I do like Drop a Caribou. How can you not like a horse that's won five out of six starts here at the Downs? The only blemish going around two turns, and I think Lucky Luke. We'll rally late and get third, so I'm giving you a five, four, and three. Good luck here in race number two.
time. Rio should be a quick load. Lucky Luke will be the first one in. Drop a caribou. Safely secure. And now just waiting on the fortifying favorite. That's it. That It's that time. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, Lucky Luke showing good early speed with Drop a Caribou. To his outside in second, and it's that time. Now going to press three wide, a length off of it in third. But it's Lucky Luke with the short lead. Creeping up in between Drop a Caribou, and now three across the track. As it's that time is now right up there. The opening quarter, a rather quick 22 and 3. Throw a blanket over him. A short lead by Drop a Caribou. Fighting back on the inside, Lucky Luke. It's that time. Starting to time the ride on the outside, the half mile, 45 and 3. They hit the head of the lane, and Lucky Luke smoothly takes the inside. And is going on with it. Drop a caribou in between horses. It's that time on the outside. Trying to get them all. Drop a caribou. It's that time. Drop a caribou is going to take it. It's that time for second and third. Lucky Luke. I've requested a photograph to determine the winning horse. They went the opening quarter 22 and 3, the half 45 and 3, five furlongs 58 and 3, time for the six furlongs 112. The photo show the winner number four, Drop a Caribou. Second goes to number five, It's That Time. And third to number three, Lucky Luke. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Ideal Night for Racing. That's number four, Drop a Caribou. Drop a Caribou is a dark bear brown gelding, four years old, by Where's the Ring, out of the Mare's Stormy Adieu, by Silac. Owned by All for One Stables, trained by Shelley Brown, and ridden to victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the six furlongs, one twelve. Congratulations goes out to jockey Antonio Whitehall, who scores the early double. Two wins for jockey Antonio Whitehall. It's two is official in the upcoming third race, the Ball Insurance Agency race 
kicking off jackpot pick five wagering number six Anna Kazana the claiming price should read three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars we will carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five there's no changes in race four five or six turn your program to race number seven scratch number eight the Comrie rule the ball insurance agency race kicking off jackpot pick five wagering here in race number three Well, you better hurry. There's only 40 minutes left to give yourself a chance to go home with $5,000 in your pocket if you get drawn and you select the Ace of Diamonds. You can get your tickets at guest services in the lobby or at the VLT cashier's cage on the second level or just go online at asdowns-cta.com. And remember, by purchasing tickets, you are helping community charities.
Welcome back to Allen Paddock for race number three. Kick it off, jackpot, pick five, wagering with the $3,000 claimer for Phillies and Mayors, three and up that are non-winners of the year. They're going to go that mile distance. Let's take a quick look back at race number two stretch. A three-horse field, all within a neck at the wire. A long neck, but, but a neck. Still, and all three at the top of the lane, you thought any one of them could win. Uh, as we said off camera, we're trying to think of a better three-horse race we've seen. I don't remember seeing one better than that. No, absolutely not. You can have a 10-horse field and not have that much excitement. The entire race was out there, cat and mouse. I thought all three jockeys had gave a good ride. They did recognize the situation, and, and it just came down to a horse that had won, uh, just keeps winning. And you could see at the end, just wanted to win at the end. And uh, so six, six wins out of seven starts, six for six going two turn or one turn uh wow that's that's impressive we're trying to figure out who has more wins at the the meet in a in one meet race meet at asd if you know the answer throw it on the chat or send an email i'd like to know yeah i'd like to know too maybe uh our track historian Dorian, can yes. help us out on that one all right on to race number three stretch we both like the six and why not whitehall's going for three in a row yes an interesting Interesting because I always watch odds and value, and so there's a big early money on the six, and then suddenly some big early or late middle money, I guess, on the one. So anyway, let's go to the six at two to one. I like that price for sure. This horse is uh, running well, maybe a slightly easier uh, field, but as you mentioned, a couple of the horses this horse has run against have been pretty good. The 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 Ranger the other day won on Monday, so this horse can stalk. And it's just right time, just slowly getting a little bit better, wanting to win. And, and we saw Caribou win the last one because he won. All the other ones haven't really won or shown that much gameness. So I'll take the game horse in this one. Yeah, I'm with you there. Anna Kazana has yet to do anything wrong this year and has been in the money seven out of eight times. I also like number one streamer. I'm not liking the price right now at two to five. But streamer and wit nine, they battled it out with Bluegrass Soul last time out. And then Bluegrass Soul took off on him, and where the money went, came from the back of the field to swoop them all. Streamer was dueling on the outside that day. I don't expect that to happen today. I think Streamer on the inside is going to take control early, and I think has a big shot of going all the way. Yeah, and that, that's how he certainly can, uh, she can win it, and that's all it takes in one of these. Two is my uh, second choice, just because of a, a couple reasons. One, Showed speed last time. I like when horses tried a little bit different. And then uh, has only four starts. So I, I like that too. The horse is still fresh. And uh, potential improved effort off of that race. Yeah, this horse can come off the pace. Uh, usually is a really good stalker. And that's why I picked it a few times already this year. Also take a look at number three, Wits Memories. The other one sent up by trainer Carl Anderson. Wit nine, the other one. And Wits Memories really hasn't been able to get it going. Was beaten by Streamer last time out and by Wit 9. And didn't show a lot of run. Was kind of just right there and then faded. This horse will have to show a lot more to get up there. For sure. Let's let's take a look at the, the five that is, is kind of a, a deep closer. Is going to need a pace battle up here. You're getting 30 to 1. Now, reminder, this is non-winners of, I think it's the last six months. Yep. It's the last six months. Doesn't matter for some of them. Good to need a pace. Could wake up at 30 to 1. If you're a long shot player, this is maybe a race to do it. And and the last one there, Kurt. Number four, Valente. Kind of woke up two outs ago at this non winners of the year, going five and a half. Made a really good close down the lane. Only lost by four and three quarter lengths. Then was forward on the pace last time out against Aramon, who went to the front at, off the big drop in class and went wire to wire. I expect Valente to run a bit better in here. This could be a big upsetter at 35 to 1. Yeah, this is the level to get then. All Ten. right, pick five times stretch. What do you have? I've only got one ticket. What? And it's a small ticket because I'll be honest, I really don't have a feeling on, on it. So we're just playing a small ticket. Um, it'll probably win because I don't like my ticket, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> one and six with three and six with three, four, seven. 
with 128 with 246. It's only 2160. That's why I took a small shot. And myself, I'm taking the one and six in here. Then I'm keying the six, and then it's loading up. Three, six, seven, and eight. Then one, two, five, six, and eight. Rounding it out with two, five, six, and seven. That'll be $32 in stretch. So parlay, who do you got? Well, I'll, I'll take the six. I'm, I'm still going. I got the free space, free bingo space at uh, last race. And uh, 22 show on six. You're back in with? Ah, the car change. No, it's pizza. We bought pizza oh, for the seven. Oh, right. pizza change. It's pizza change. Pizza change today. All right. So I'm going to go 20 to show on the one streamer. Good luck with all your wagers here in race three. We'll see you back for race four. on the track for race number three the ball insurance agency race they're gonna go one mile for ten thousand dollars number one is streamer owned by sanderson stables trained by bruce sanderson with stanley shady jr number two is wit nine owned by katherine ursel trained by carl anderson with fraser abley Number three is Wits Memories, owned by Catherine Ursel, trained by Carl Anderson with Tim Tarasenko. Number four is Valente, owned by Vela K. Butler, trained by Jennifer Jordan with Siobhan Bell. Number five is Mucho Express, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Courtney Ross with Nairon Austin. Rounding out the field is number six, Anna Kazana, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Antonio Whitehall. The Ball Insurance Agency race. Here in race number three, they'll go to post in approximately three minutes. And turning your programs back to race number two, we had a claim to report. Claim for $7,500. Was your race winner number four? Drop a caribou. Claimed by Elton Dickey, owner trainer. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls are uh, kicking off the pick five sequence going a mile which is eight furlongs they're going to go past the wire twice so be ready for that let's go to the outside uh the six horse she's actually won a couple races this year and most of the other ones in fact all of them have not won a race so she likes to win some races she's going to get a stocking trip and should have tried to run them down late if the 
the others don't step it up, she should be the winner. Others to consider is the two horse. You're getting nine to two or eleven dollars. She's going to also get a good trip. Showed something last time. Could wake up and the rail horse. Maybe that's the one that goes to the lead and goes gate to wire. But I've got it six, two, and one. Kurt. I'm with you on number six. Anna Kozana has run some big races this year. Comes off a big effort last time out where it was beaten by Aramon, taking the big drop in from allowance to the restricted Manitoba Bread. The reason this horse is a non-winners is those restricted races don't count. So she's the top bet. I do like number one streamer inside speed. I think it's going to try and take it all the way and win nine. This horse loves the distance. I expect a stocking roll today. I'm taking six, one, and two. Good luck here in race number three. The first one into the starting gate. Wit nine also goes in. Next up, Wit's memories. Valente set to walk in. Just two left to load. Mucho Express. Now just waiting on the overwhelming one to two favorite. That's Anna Kazana. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, Wit 9 away. Well, Streamer showing speed on the inside. Wit's memories also up close early. Three wide in third. Another length back to Valente with Anna Kazana. 
And then six more to the trailer, which will be Mucho Express. Streamer makes the front end through a quick opening quarter in 23 and 3, with nine relentless in second, and moves right alongside a gap of two lengths back to Anna Kozana and Wits Memories watching that action. And then it's five more to Valente and Mucho Express, about a dozen off the lead. Slow down half mile, 48 and four. Streamer on the inside, Wit nine. On the outside, Anna Kazana. Now going after him, trying to reel him in from third. Back in fourth, Valente making the way up the rail with Wit's memories to the outside. And Mucho Extra Express starting to make up ground. Three quarters, 115 and two. They hit the head of the lane with nine and streamer. These two still going at it. Anna Cosana, she's found some late run. Three wide and powers on by Anna Cosana. The favorite is going to take it. Giving Whitehall the hat trick. Streamer in second, third to wit nine, and fourth to Mucho Express. Stewart's supposed to number six, Anna Kazana, as your race winner. Second goes to number one, Streamer. Third to number two, Wit Nine. And fourth to number five, Mucho Express. They went the opening quarter 23 and three, the half 48 and four. Six furlongs, 115 and two. Seven furlongs, 129 and two. Time for the mile, 143 and four. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Ball Insurance Agency race, that's number six, Anna Kazana. Anna Kazana is a dark bear brown filly, three years old, by Kozan. Out of the mare, looks like six, by Mukduk Dim. Owned by Henry Wood Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, and ridden to victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the mile, 143 and four. Congratulations goes out to trainer Jerry Gorno and jockey Antonio Whitehall for teaming up for the double. Two wins for trainer Jerry Gorno with jockey Antonio Whitehall. Add one more to jockey Antonio Whitehall for the natural hat trick. Three in a row for jockey Antonio Whitehall. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race. The Hudson Financial Race kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. There are no changes. We'll carry on with the changes in this evening's pick four. No changes in race five or six. Turning your programs, race number seven, scratch number eight, the Comrie Rule. The Hudson Financial Race Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed. 
pick four wagering. They'll go to post in 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we've drawn our VIP fan of the night. Congratulations goes out to Troy Finaleson. Troy Finaleson, congratulations. You're our VIP fan of the night. Please report to guest services on the main floor. South End. Reminder that if you are new to racing, to download the new Dark Horse Bets app. All new account signups do receive a free $30 deposit to their account. The Dark Horse Bets app was designed for people new to horse racing, making wagering simple with smart picks predictions available for all races. Get your free $30 now by signing up for Dark Horse Bets. Just scan the QR code on the front of your program.
welcome back down the paddock for race number four. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering with a $3,000 claimer for three year olds and up that are non winners of the year. They're going to go five and a half furlongs. Well, stretch. It's the Antonio Whitehall show as the big favorite. Anna Kazana stalked the pace battle and took over late. Absolutely. Three good, three very good rides. So, is it going to be the, the Kurt, Stretch, and Antonio show, or is it the Kurt, Antonio, and Stretch show? Like, where's it, where's it fit with this, with this riding? And he's, he's the highlight right now with uh, two, three good rides. Uh, oh, no doubt about it. And they weren't easy ones. He had to work with all of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Pick four sequence. Lots of horses. Good payouts coming, I think. Potentially already a bunch of money in the pool. We're going to fly over the 50,000. Julie, let's go to the three horse trying to beat the favorite. And uh, Mr. Hands On, who ran a nice first race over the track, just was a little too far back and couldn't possibly make up that much ground. Uh, this horse is usually not that far back. Hoping this horse sits uh, a little bit closer. If you look back at the Remington Park races going. Uh, Five and a half, which I like in the October and September, was only four lengths back. That's a pretty good race at Remington for five or for five thousand with some conditions. I'm hoping that similar race, and even the last race, just has to be closer. And I maybe I get the upset in here. Yeah, I'm going straight to the six horse Lucky Break. I think it's his race to lose. What a great race last time out. Had to battle every step of the way on the outside, and then was caught very late by Will Knows, the previous start against Dazzling Mischief. That was a great race as there was a pile of speed in there, made a good late charge down the lane, only to get beaten by a half a length, and that was going five that day. Gets that half a furlong today. Lucky Break doesn't need the lead, but I think if the horse breaks and is close, he's just going to sit on it, and Jerry Gorno is, is looking for the hat trick. For sure. For sure, and uh, you mentioned the horse that I think is the horse that they're going through. I was just trying to beat uh, that horse, which is very possible if, if the three runs. Let's talk about the five, Kurt. <laughs> Hemmelstein. Hemmelstein, thank you. Why would I take this one? Well, I owe, I owe this horse uh, because of a couple long shots. And he keeps, I know this horse can show speed, and if he gets the lead, he can get brave and keep going. Last time he was pressured and, and gave it up, he's cutting back. He was too high, or a little too high level last time, or, or when he was going short. Give him one more last chance. You're not going to have me select him in the final weeks, just and, to let you know. And number four towards the light has been getting better with each and every start. A good second last time out to rebounder. And the previous start had to go against rebounder and Arcadian Storm, who was the favorite. So towards the light, you get Antonio Whitehall. He's looking for four in a row. Definitely has a shot. And number seven, Warbridge. This horse woke up last time out. Only lost by a length. I've been chasing this horse for two years. Hasn't got to the win column. Ran a bunch of good races, seconds and thirds. But I think Warbridge just might be coming into himself. For sure. And if you want some long shots to complete the try, um, look at the one and the two. They haven't shown a lot, but uh, these are the type of horses that can make the trifecta pay if they run a third or fourth for the super. All right, let's go to our wagers here. Pick four times stretch. I'm betting you have two tickets. I have two bets. Oh, two bets? Yes. Okay, not two tickets, no, but... but uh, uh, again, I'm alive in the pick five on a ticket I didn't like. I'm on a pick four that I'm on the fence what I want to do with. Three six with three four seven with one two eight with two four six. Couldn't key anywhere, but I do like this three thirty place on three. Gets there. That would pay for my ticket. And myself, I like a key. I like Lucky Break in here. So I'm taking just the six with three, six, seven, and eight. Then one, two, five, six, eight. And round it out with two and five. That's a $40 ticket. All right, stretch, show parlay. Well, I'm, ta I'm taking the three. So who's the pizza guy taking? I'm going to take the seven, Warbridge. Whoa. I'm, going, I'm going out on a limb. I knew they were going to put the six up there, but I'm not taking it. I would not do that I'm to you. I'm going for odds. Seven. He's going to the seven. Sorry, Beth. See yeah, that? sorry about that, Beth. Beth. I only do that every now and then. Ouch. Good luck with all your wagers here in race four, and we'll see you back for race five.
Drive for race number four, the Hudson Financial Race. They're going five and a half furlongs for ten thousand dollars. Number one is Done Right, owned by Sean Morin and John Clement, trained by Sean Morin with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number two is Lady Sunset, owned by Hetty Kling, trained by Maria Stanford with Siobhan Bell. Number three is Mr. Hands On, owned by Steve Herman Jr., trained by Tom Gardipe Jr. with Tim Tarasenko. Number four is Towards the Light, owned and trained by Courtney Ross with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is Himmelstein, owned and trained by Doug Mustard with Chavi and Chow. Number six is Lucky Break, owned by Racing Late Stable, trained by Jerry Gorno with Stanley Shady Jr. Rounding out the field is number seven, War Bridge, owned by Quinny Racing, trained by Tom Gardaby Jr. with Ronald Alley. The Hudson Financial Race, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. They'll go to post in approximately three minutes. Gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number three, we had a claim to report. Claim for $3,750 was number six, Anna Kazana, claimed by Shelly Brown, owner trainer. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, we're going five and a half furlongs, kicking off the pick four. We've got uh, Six boys, one girl going in here. Let's start with the horse to try to beat the big favorite here. I'm going to the three. Nice race last time, made a big close. Has some back talent at uh, a track at Remington Park. Similar trip, doesn't lose touch, certainly could maybe upset the favorite. The favorite is the six, is the horse to beat. Big race last time, just lost. A repeat of that effort puts him right to the winner's circle. Just not great odds, but you can't leave him out. Who's a price horse? Let's look at the five. Himmelstein will try to get the lead, needs the lead, and will try to go as fast and as far as he can go. Ten to one. You will get paid if he can do that. Let's go three, six, and five. Kurt. I really like number six, Lucky Break. Sitting on a win. Ran two big races back to back. I think this is an easier field. Whether he goes to the lead or sits off it, it's his race to lose. I also like the seven horse in here, Warbridge. Woke up last time with a good third place effort. Came running down the lane. That shows me that he wants to run. Does very well at the distance. So I got him for second. And you got to throw in the hot jockey. 
That's the four horse in here towards the light. Whitehall's won the first three. Can't, I guess, win four in a row. He might get it done. Six, seven, and four for me. Good luck here in race four. Sunset, the first to go into the starting gate. And Zahn is in. Towards the light, steps up and in. Next up, Himmelstein. Lucky break, the current seven to five favorite. Goes right in, just two left to load. Dunright goes in on the inside and now just waiting on Warbridge. Dunright fractures in the starting gate. Right has been taken out of the starting gate for a veterinary inspection. Batch climbs back aboard, done right, and back into the gate he goes. The field is set, they're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, Lady Sunset. Quickly out to grab the early lead. 
to the outside, a lucky break with Himmelstein. They're settled in second and third. Another length back towards the light, Warbridge. To the outside in fifth. Three more back to Dunright. And Mr. Hands on the early trailer, spotting the field about nine lengths. The opening quarter, 22 and three. Lady Sunset with the lead by a length. Lucky break. The stalker moving up on the outside in second. Back in third towards the light. Warbridge, four wide. They hit the head of the lane. Lady Sunset has made every pull a winning one. 46 and three. But now Lucky Break takes over and powers on by. Lucky Break, a 16th of a mile ago, is going to win by three. Lucky Break gets the win. Second to Warbridge, third towards the light, and fourth to Himmelstein. Here's a post to number six, Lucky Break, as your race winner. A photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 22 and three, the half 46 and three. Five furlongs, 59 and one. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 106 and one. So the photo show number seven, Warbridge, finishing second. Third goes to number four, Towards the Light. And fourth to number five, Emil Stein. Entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number four, the Hudson Financial Race, the winner number six, Lucky Break. Lucky Break is a chestnut gelding, five years old by It's My Lucky Day, out of the mare Terralicious by Street Boss. Owned by Racing Lake Stable, trained by Jerry Gorno, and ridden to victory by Stanley Shady Jr. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 106 and one. Goes out to trainer Jerry Gorno, who scores the hat trick. Three wins for trainer Jerry Gorno. Race four is official in the upcoming fifth race. Our VIP fan of the night race. There are no changes. Post time for race number five. 14 minutes away. Join us this Saturday and Sunday for Manitoba Food Truck Battles. 
30 of the best food trucks in Manitoba will be on site. There's going to be live entertainment, kids' activities, and a tattoo pop-up. This is one foodie event you won't want to miss. Get all the details at asdowns.com. And we've drawn our winner for Chase the Ace, Patricia, was our winner and selected a 10 of spades. So got herself $201. The jackpot is still alive, guaranteed at $5,000. And that ticket was purchased right here at ASD. Chase the Ace, here at ASD every week. Welcome back down the paddock for race number five. We have an allowance race 
four, three and up maidens are going to go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number four. Stretch Lucky Break just sat behind Lady Sunset, took over and made it look rather easy. Yeah, it was one of those smart ride recognizing uh, that the pace is probably going to come back. And as you mentioned, this horse can stalk and, and uh, certainly uh, did that. Was sit Basically was sitting on, on a win. A lot of good races. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, on to race number five, an interesting mixed bag. It is. A, it's, a, it's a good uh, betting race. And just look at the odds. I always like the, I like these trying to figure these puzzles out. It's You're going to get some value. Well, I was getting value, and then they just bet my horse. All right, Julie, let's find the four. I'm uh, getting value. Yes, you are on yours. Yeah. On my show horse. Your show horse. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's talk about this. This is a, a Philly versus uh, the Colts. And and Gelding's in here, but we've seen the Phillies uh, beat up on the boys a few times this year. Quite a few times. And, and I'm okay with this. Uh, she just ran so game. She pressed early, was right there, kind of dropped back, and then came on again. And so I was so impressed with that. That's a kind of call it a Z pattern. And so just because of that only one start, I think this horse has a chance to improve. We'll have to improve a little bit, but... Uh, I don't like five to two. I was hit, hoping for a quite a bit higher, maybe like five to one or so. So we'll see where the odds are. But uh, that is my uh, top selection in a tough race. Yeah, no doubt about it. Four boys, five girls. I went to number six, finalized. Yeah, 18 starts. Yet to get that win. But looking at this race, try and find another speed horse to go out to the front with finalized. Finalized never really got out of the gate that well last time out. and. Kind of sat in behind, made the move, got a little tired late, going the five and a half furlongs. But I think this horse clears today. And with Fraser Abley aboard, you get that break in the weights. And that's always absolutely huge. So I think finalize will make the front and play catch me if he can. Yep, that that's <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not falling yeah, okay. for Yeah, we'll gonna, see after the race. We will see after the I race. I might be laughing at myself <laughs> after the race. <laughs> all right, let's go to the seven, which is almost was kind of my co top selection. This horse had a tough trip last time. Uh the previous two races ran really nice and made nice moves late. Hoping that I get a bit of a cleaner trip. I can't get too far uh behind and then and make that nice even run. So if somebody gets loose, this might be tough for this one to get there, but the figures are there, the, the talent is there, just needs the trip. Another horse to look at, number three. No, I won't back down. Last time out, not a great break out of the gate. Did break on top, but went, then was sucked back to second last. Made a good late charge down the lane to get second money from Rough Customer. That was a horse that ran in the Derby trial. And the Derby and ended up uh, taking that drop to the maiden allowance and making quick work of the field. No, I won't back down. Doesn't have to be that far away from it. Two outs ago was right there in the thick of things before tiring late. And that was a really tough maiden allowance race. So no, I won't back down. You're getting great odds right now. It's six to one with the jock use one three tonight. Yeah, that's that's the overlay right there. I do like that one as well. Let's go to the, the uh, eight, the invader from uh, Century Mile. Hasn't raced this year. Always a little hesitant uh, when they haven't got a start in at this time, but uh, the workouts say the horse can be ready to go. Showed speed in a stake race, which is really impressive. So uh, work say go, the early betting says go, so you don't want to leave this horse out. Morning line 12 to one. It's always tough if you're the morning line person to where to put them on there so i think it's an underlay but if it's if the horse is as live as as the connections think better pay attention another horse to look at number nine ashes to ashes another filly in here she ran a good race last time out only got beat by a length and three quarters in the end was beaten by the two and the four ashes to ashes has showed flashes of brilliance don't expect her to show speed she will be sitting near the back making a late charge for sure and as the horse you mentioned the two horse uh, currently five to one ran a real nice race last time uh seems to be one of those kind of improving horses cut cut back and, and ran a nice one last time it certainly is uh right in the mix for sure and four to one uh, one of those a little lower than expected and the five which jerry uh well jerry gorno has won three already tonight and this one going off at 40 to one yeah didn't show much first time out but broke slow, steadied, 
And he had a horse last year that did the same thing, went off at this kind of odds and got the job done. Yeah, it was for 5000 But never know with Jerry Gorno, he can have this one ready. And the horse has only had one start. And the last one on the rail, um, unfortunately, broke steps. So last time gets the dreaded rail. That's not going to help. But again, one of these, that first race lifetime, wasn't a bad race, then some trouble going a mile. This would be your upset horse to maybe be in the money. You know, again, a third or a fourth. That's all you need, even if the other ones come in. And with look at the odds board here, how tough it is. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number five stretch. What do you have? Okay, we're going to go with a $5 exact wheel, four and seven, with three, four, six and seven. Beth, call, Beth let me know. She felt bad for me on the show parlay. She's lending me 20 bucks. How come she didn't feel bad for me? Oh, well, things happen. Um, stretch ad alert. This is new. This is brand new. This is a loan. Twenty dollars to place on the four. We've got a loan going. Wow. <laughs> so didn't have to go to the car to get the change. It's too dark out. You're, All right. You're back. I'm just gonna do a ten dollar exactor box, three and six, while my show's still alive. I got twenty-five dollars to show, and I'm going on number six finalized. Twenty-six. An extra buck. Did I get that one off you, Stretch? Yeah, you did. All right, twenty-six to show on the six. Good luck to, with all your wagers here in race five, and we'll see you back for race six. for race number five our vip fan of the night race they're gonna go six furlongs for twenty thousand dollars number one is dub saint angel owned by deborah fancy trained by lauren fraser with chavi and chow number two is i am mila owned by back on track stables and larry falloon trained by jennifer jordan with siobhan bell Number three is No, I Won't Back Down, owned by Ross Racing Stables, trained by Courtney Ross with Antonio Whitehall. Number four is Gotta Love That Girl, owned by King Couture and Sharon Ewell, trained by Jared Brown with Arthur Badu. Number five is Witch Jerry, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number six is Final Eyes, owned and trained by Shelly Brown with Fraser Abley. Number seven is Viral, owned by Beth Kosh, trained by Stephen Gaskin with Sven Balru. Number eight is Catch the Dream, owned by Greenlaw Farms, trained by Carl Anderson with Tim Tarasenko. Running out the field is number nine, Ashes to Ashes. Owned by Shelley Brown, Bet Holtman, Steve Holburn, Christina Bell, Black Sox Stables, and B&J Stable. Trained by Shelley Brown with Demario Bino. Our VIP Fan of the Night race. Here in race number five, they'll go to post in approximately three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, here we go. Uh, we've got maidens, horses that have never won a race lifetime, going six furlongs. You asked for a, or hoping for a, a tough field to figure out, you got one. Just take a look at the odds. Let's go to the four. One of the fillies, or girls in the race, only one start. Nice race, a bit of trouble, kind of a green running style. Close early, drop back, came again. I think she can improve, and if she does, she could be right there. You're getting seven to one. The horse that had a tough trip last time, that's the seven. Getting more than fair value at uh, $11 there. This horse has the talent. Closes late, certainly could get there. And the horse that likes to finish third, that's the six. Why not use him third? Oh, right, Kurt, you're using him first. Go ahead, Kurt. Well, Stretch, there isn't a lot of speed in here, so I could see the opening quarter going in 24 and a half and 48 and that's going to be number six finalized on the front there is a big lack of speed so i think with fraser abley aboard he just might be able to control it and go all the way i also like number three no i won't back down should be settled right close to the pace and make that late charge like he did last time out and number seven viral needs a better trip than last time and if he does get it he was sitting on a win in his two previous starts, so I'm going to give you a six, three, and seven. Good luck here in race five. Angel, the first one into the starting gate. Next up, I am Mila. No, I won't back down. Set to go in. 
Next up, gotta love that girl. Here comes Witch Jerry. Finalize eight to five favorite goes right in. Next up, viral. Just two left to load. Catch the dream. And just waiting on ashes to ashes to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the middle of the track, finalize. Quickly goes up to get the early lead with Viral. To the outside in second, catch the dream. Moving up three wide on the inside, I am Mila in fourth. Hugging the rail, Dub Saint Angel. And no, I won't back down in six. Gotta love that girl in seventh. Three more back to Witch Jerry, who's gonna be the trailer above 15 off of it. 23 seconds, the opening quarter. On the inside, finalized. Viral in between. Three wide, catch the dream. No, I won't back down watching that action. Three lengths off it, trying to reel him in. 46 and four, the half mile. And rallying late. No, I won't back down. A 16th of a mile to go. Catch the dream. Finalize these two and catch the dream. Is going to take it. Finalize second best. Third to no, I won't back down. Fourth to I am Mila and fifth to Ashes to Ashes. Ladies and gentlemen, hold all tickets. The inquiry sign is on the board here for race five. have requested a photograph to determine the winning horse they went the opening quarter 23 seconds the half 46 and four five furlongs 59 and three time for the six furlongs 113 Also, the photo should have break. Catch the dream is your race winner. Second goes to number six, finalize. Third to number three, no, I won't back down. And fourth to number two, I am Mila. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Stewart's inquiry into the stretch drive.
Treating the winners in closure, the unofficial winner here in race five, our VIP fan of the night race. That's number eight, Catch the Dream. Catch the Dream is a dark bear, brown filly, three years old, by Daddy Long Legs, out of the mare, out of thin air, by JBK, owned by Greedlaw Farms, trained by Carl Anderson, and ridden to victory by Tim Tarasenko. Time for the six furlongs, one thirteen. And gentlemen, after reviewing the films, the stewards have removed the inquiry sign off the board. Eight six three two is official in the upcoming six race. Classic high five wagering. We will be awaiting a rider change on number two, Club Champ. As soon as I receive it, I will inform you. Classic high five wagering here in race number six. New to sit a boy downs, then check out the 140 VLTs located on the second level. They're open all day, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have that late rider change for you here in race number six. Number two, Clump Champ, will now be ridden by Arthur Badu. Once again, in this is sixth race, number two, Club Champ, make the rider Arthur Badu. Welcome back to Alipatic for race number six, classic high five wagering for this $5,500 claimer for three year olds and up. They're going to go seven and a half furlongs. Number two, club champ, make the jockey Arthur Badu. Let's take a quick look back at race number five. Well, stretch, it was one of the Phillies getting it done. Catch the dream. Wow, a good race on the outside for the first start of the year. Yeah, all signs were a go. We we talked about it. The, the horse opened with some early money, and then the workout showed that this horse was ready to run. This horse ran in a stake race and an allowance race last time or last year, and just had this horse ready to go and ran a, ran a real nice race on the outside. Yeah, she's really matured from her two year old campaign. Okay, on to race number six. Stretch. What do you like? Well, uh, interesting. Look at a, another betting board that uh, the odds, the favorite is, is a three to one only. I'm going to start to the one on the rail. Uh, I thought this horse would be a bigger favorite. I'm liking the price at four to one. This horse should get a trip. Uh, should uh, has been running in fast races. Like I said uh, on ASD Live, it was the fastest 5,500 uh, race of the year at that level. Dino came back to win to show how live it was. This horse ran second. Uh, and and uh, ran a nice race. This time should get the rail trip. And if it does, that watch out. Likes to make a nice move. If there's no trouble, can make that move and kind of take over uh, mid stretch. Yeah, the horse I like in here is number eight, North Fork. There is speed in here. The two club champ can show speed. The three could. The four could. The five for sure is. And I also think the six rig right is going to show speed. So I looked for a closer, and I settled on the 8 North Fork. Ran a good second last time out to Dino, who he ran 4-2 in the previous effort, but wasn't able to get there. But this horse has run some big races this year, had a couple wins, winning the non-3 and the non-4 condition, and three outs ago beat Lucky Luke, who was the 1-2 to two favorite that day. But with North Fork making that power move last time out, I think the horse is going to do it again today with a hot early early pace and a horse that is running well. Yes, and like you said, needs that hot early pace. And if that's the case, watch out. I went to the two that could be on the uh, uh, early pace, but also can sit just off two to one. I'm a little surprised on how low this the odds are. Maybe they uh, just recognized uh, who this horse lost to. We saw a drop a caribou win uh, the second race today at a higher level against a good one. 7,500. And it was a tough 75, even though there's only three. This horse makes this horse even more live. Can the horse go two turns? I think so. Uh, six of 10 in the money. So, uh, again, I don't like the odds, but you can't leave it out. Uh, I'm expecting the odds to go higher. Another horse I like, number five, Labrat. Labrat last time out was sprinting, and that's not his gig, but showed good early speed and only lost by two lengths in the end. Now gets a stretch out seven and a half furlongs. I think this is a horse that might be able to clear if it does get out of the gate really well. Jerry Gornell, three wins already today. And the last time Labrat cleared on the front end, he lasted to victory in a hard fought win at the 75 level. Yeah, for sure. Let's go to a, a long shot here. The seven horse way back in July, this horse was, was the best on it for 55 then tailed off, then last time decided to do something different and press outside. Now I don't think that's going to happen. I think the horse is going to stalk. It's kind of a tip to a cap of a horse that you might want to use as a good long shot to be in the money. I think this horse uh, gets the weight break as well that uh, we like to talk about from time to time. And I think it's a really good long shot to be there. Yeah, the another money. one getting the weight break is number six, Rig Wright with Fraser Abley. This horse was a winner in the non-two-life condition. 
then went into the non three, ran a really good second to Terra Tattoo. Now Rig Wright is coming out of those conditions and jumping up to the 55 wide open. If it's going to show speed in here, it has, it's going to battle with the five Lab Rat, but did run a tremendously good effort last time. Yeah, for sure. And the horse that hasn't gone two turns until from last year is a three horse. Back class last year in the allowance level, won at seven and a half last year in August. Hasn't won this year. Again, was in that uh, d drop a caribou race, couple troubled trips. Again, another price horse, 11 to one. They probably need a little bit higher, but uh, again, could complete that high five. This, if, if you hit the high five in here, uh, you're, uh, you're going to get paid. Oh, definitely you will. And the nine horse looking high. This horse was running really well at the 5,500 and the allowance level, but has tailed off in the last two races. Most recently was in 4,000 non-winners of the year. Out on Saturday, took easy care of that field, drawing off to win by three. Draws outside going seven and a half furlongs. I think it's going to have a tough time from out there. For sure. And then uh, Magic Carpet, which uh, first start here and one kind of going away. Beat a, beat a horse that I do like that's very game. Recognize that was a non-four lifetime. Now we're 55 open. That is a move up in class. But when you're running that well, there's some good races at Will Rogers that puts this horse here. Again, in the, the uh, six to one, yeah, that's about right. I, like I said, another horse in the mix that uh, you don't want to leave out. I can't box nine horses, Kurt. Yeah, and Magic Carpet was running in wide open company at Will Rogers and Fair Meadow. So this isn't uh, anything new for Magic Carpet. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race six stretch. What do you have? Well, I'm, I'm on the hook right now with Beth, but uh, so I'm just going to make a simple <laughs> $3 exactor box, one, two, and eight right now. And we'll leave it at that. No change alert, no ad alert. $3 exactor box one, two, and eight. And myself, I'm going 30 to place on the eight North Fork. And somehow I am still alive in the show parlay. So I got $30, so I might as well put it to show on number eight North Fork. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six. And we'll see you back for race seven.
ladies and gentlemen, we have a slight delay into the running of race number six. Once again, a slight delay into the running of race six. Your patience is greatly appreciated. track for race number six they're gonna go seven and a half furlongs for thirteen thousand two hundred dollars number one is x checker owned by monique goulet trained by will Toronto with antonio whitehall number two is club champ owned by jared brown lucky eight stable and twss stable Trained by Jared Brown with Arthur Badu. Number three is Golden Eyed. Owned by Back on Track Stables. Trained by Jennifer Jordan with Nyron Austin. Number four is Magic Carpet. Owned by Leland Cavanaugh. Trained by Perry Cavanaugh with Ronald Alley. Number five is Lab Rat. Owned by Henry Wood Jr. Trained by Jerry Gorno with Jorge Carreño. Number six is Rigged Right, owned by Andre Ellis, trained by Michael Rowe, with Fraser Abley. Number seven is Captive Kitten, owned and trained by Victoria Morse, with Douglas Badaloo. Number eight is North Fork, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Devin Gittens, with Demario Bino. Rounding out the field is number nine, Looking High, owned and trained by Terry Cole with Praven Badri. Post time for race number six, approximately three minutes away.
now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going seven and a half furlongs field at nine. Another tough betting race. Let's go to the rail horse, who's now become the favorite. Back in back in uh, July and June, this horse was very tough to be beat. Has declined a little bit, but it's been right there. Should get a great trip. Just a matter of can return to form. Runs back to the last few. Certainly can be there. A bit of a price horse is the eight. This horse won't be near the lead. Will be closing late. Just has to get the right trip to get up. And let's go to the two horse. Had some early money going higher odds now. Could go to the lead. Could sit just off. Ran an absolute dynamite race last time. A repeat. That gets them to the winner's circle. That's how wide open it is. It's 1 8 and 2. Kurt. Stretch. I ended up taking number 8, North Fork. I think there is going to be pace in here between the 5 and the 6 for sure. Maybe throw in the 2, 3, or 4 to add to it. North Fork has run well here all year long. Five for seven in the money. Ran second to Dino last time out, who has won back to back after running fourth with the more pace that is in here that I think is going to happen. North Fork has them to run at, so watch for that late run. I do like number five, Labrat. If you're thinking the speed might get away, this is the one that can do it. Last time the horse shook free, did go wire to wire. And number one, X Checker has always been right there. A good second at Dino. Last time it did run, had some time off in between and draws the important rail position. So I'm going to give you eight, five, and one. Good luck here in race number six. Decker, the current two to one favorite, is the first one in. Next up, Club Champ. Golden Eyed walks up and in. Magic Carpet is next. Here comes Labrat from the middle. Rigwright's turn. Here comes Captive Kitten. Two left to load. North Fork. Now waiting on looking high to the outside.
The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, X Checker is away well, as is Club Champ and Golden Eyed. Lab Rats now going to press three wide with Club Champ and Golden Eyed in between horses. X Checkers sitting on the rail with Magic Carpet to the outside. Settled back a length. That's going to be North Fork. And then another length back is Captive Kitten. And looking high is the early trailer. And Rig Wright is out of the race. 23 and 4, the opening quarter. And it's Golden Eyed and Club Champ battling it out. Lab Rat, three wide on the outside. X Checker with a pile of horse looking for room on the rail. Magic Carpet. Starting to make the move three wide. North Fork in fifth. Then looking high, Captive Kitten. 47 and four to the half. And the leaders are getting swamped as Club Champ and GoldenEye get company from Magic Carpet. Four wide, the rail opened up and X Checker took full advantage. X Checker to the outside, Magic Carpet. North Fork is rallying on the far outside with Captain Kitten and Look and I, but X Checker is gonna get it done by two. Second best Magic Carpet, third's gonna go to Mag or Captain Kitten, and fourth to Club Champ. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold all tickets at Stewart's inquiry into the running of race six. First opposed to number one, X Checker as a race winner. Second goes to number four, Magic Carpet. Third to number seven, Captive Kitten. Fourth to number two, Club Champ. And fifth to number nine, Looking High. They went the opening quarter 23 and four. A half 47 and four. Six furlongs, 114 and one. Seven furlongs, 127 and one. Time for the seven and a half furlongs. 134. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race number six, that's number one, X Checker. X Checker is a gray or own gelding, seven years old by exchange rate. Out of the mare, fools in love, why not for love? Owned by Monique Goulet, trained by Will Taranjo, and ridden a victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the seven and a half furlongs, one thirty-four. Congratulations goes out to jockey Antonio Whitehall, who scores the four bagger. Four wins for a Cinnaboy Downs leading rider, Antonio Whitehall.
and gentlemen, the Stewarts have removed the inquiry sign off the board. One, four, seven, two, nine will become official. Coming seventh race, classic high five wagering. Scratch number eight, the Comrie rule. Once again in race number seven, scratch the eight, the Comrie rule. Classic high five wagering that has a carryover of $2,278. They'll go to post in 16 minutes. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine, just $4.75 and 25% off all appetizers. Plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m.
back down the paddock for race number seven. We have allowance optional $15,000 claimer for Philly three-year-olds. They're gonna go six furlongs. Stretch number eight, the Tomry roll. Quick look back at race number six stretch. The dream trip for number one X checker. Yeah, so when it's when it's your day, it's your day, and it's Antonio's day because sometimes uh, the rail does not open up, and if it didn't open up, he would have been running over horses and and uh, all, all the way around the turn, he was ready, ready to, go. to go. And it, it, we got to see the the old, uh, old or old form from a couple months ago. Now he did get a dream trip, but uh, good race on the four mark. Hopefully the four comes back next time because he was wide throughout, made a nice middle move. And was the winner if the one doesn't get that uh, rail break. And Captive Kitten, a yes, good rally from the back of the field. Okay, on to race number seven. Big favorite in here. Can it get beat? Yeah, yeah the horse is a runner. We, we saw how good uh, she's been running. Uh, it's just a competitive race. We've seen this level before, and, and it's, it's such a good betting race and a good race to watch. Let's start with the four as my top selection, and then we'll get to who we have the favorite for second. Dancing Star, this horse was close early, bit of a, a Z pattern, was closer than usual, I thought, because of the fast fractions, then dropped back, and then finished with horse, and that was big. So I just liked how this horse finished up, was, wasn't was getting to the winner, but had to make up so many lengths. So I think I'm going to get a nice price. Seven to one is is the is my number for this horse. So um, and, and Fraser's back up, who ran third with this horse a couple starts ago. Yeah, the horse I put on top is number five, Diamond Grand. Diamond Grand, when it came here, came off a win at 10 on two, impressively by five, hit the Jack Hardy and the Manitoba Oaks, going around the ground, cut back sprinting last time out, and rallied really well down the lane. Jerry's having a great day, Antonio's having a great day, and I'm going to get 10 to one. Oh. Jumping on the bandwagon. Why not at this time? For sure. <laughs> sure. I, well, I would too. You get their streaks and they're on streaks. So well, let's go to that. Let's talk about the two. We both like the two. She has run three really good races. The light switch went on uh, back on in July 25th, got the lead crushed, liked that race so much, went back to her again. Last time raced against Melisandra, who's just a top Philly and Mare stake horse. She still ran a nice race. She chased. She tried to. You come off the pace, and Melisandre just had enough left to pull away. Don't take, don't put that against her. I like the new feature that she can come off the pace, and if that's the case, watch out. Yeah, that's really valuable. I also like number seven. I've got all night. They're adding a tongue tie on today. Great debut, easily beating up on the field by seven. Went in the Manitoba Oaks, didn't flash that speed. Last time out, showed some speed after a terrible break. And then what I like, she stuck around, only got beat by four and three quarters in the end. Maybe that addition of a tongue tie, that can make all the difference of the world. And if nobody else wants the lead, she might just get out there and be freewheeling. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a nice race for sure. Uh, let's go to the six. This horse uh, won at big odds last time. Um, probably was, a, I won't say probably was an overlay. That horse should not have been at uh, 50, over $55 there. I I think the same trip can happen, can stalk and take over. I don't want to hold it against her. You're not going to get the price, but you're still getting 11 to 1. Nobody believes that she can uh, win back to back. I think she has a shot. She's got the figure. She likes to win. She's five out of six, uh, first or second. So, And number one, Rushing Pearl. Showed good speed last time out from the one hole, hit the head of the lane, and got into a world of trouble. Ended up backing up to be beaten by seven in the end. If Russian Pearl wasn't in that trouble, would have been a lot closer in the end. So definitely don't leave this one out. Sure. Let's go to the outside, uh, Julie, to the nine. This horse, uh, I thought, went too quick last time. And so just kind of lost all chance because of the extreme fast fractions and ran out of gas. This horse I've been following has run some nice races. Uh, back in June was the monster race, then was in some stake races. I think this is the the what this horse was the favorite against most of these last time at two to one. Now you're nineteen to one. These are the type of horses I do like because now he runs the not so good race, but really it was better than it looked. Nineteen to one from two to one to nineteen to one. I'm not leaving this one out. 
And number three, Diane's Wish. This Manitoba bred has run really well this year. Two wins to start off the year. A couple of fourth place finishes in the stakes races. Came back last time out, ran second to Otter Pop. Has a really good running style. It shows that same run. She's another one that can win it. For sure. And then let's take a look at uh, the 10 on the outside. Going to have to try to find position. One, two back against a few of these. In fact, the horse that won uh, the last time against most of them, then ran evenly last time. This horse can go to the lead, come off. I'm not sure what they're going to decide. But uh, again, right trip could get there. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number seven. Carry over in the classic high five, just under 2,300 stretch. What? Okay, no. Okay, what's going no, on? No, no, no. There's a, there's a change alert. Hang on, Beth. I got a few things. I'm not playing the high five today because it's against Whoa. my rule because it's so a, such a tough sequence. I've got too many horses. I don't have a key. I'm cheering for the carryover. Okay. I'm cheering for the carryover for Monday. I've got a $3 exactor box, two, four, and six, but I owe Beth some money from the loan. <laughs> Beth, that's can't. right. Got to make it a $1 exactor box for six. All right, myself, I'm taking a page out of your book, Stretch. I'm betting a one dollar tractor. I'm two five seven with two five seven. Round it out with one two four five six seven. The ticket, twenty four dollars. That's the triangle. You betcha. All right. Hopefully the triangle pays off. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven, and we'll see you back next Monday, six forty five Central, for ASD Live. Back for race number seven, they're going to go six furlongs for $16,500. Number one is Russian Pearl, owned by Larry Falloon and Ron Wiley, trained by Devin Gittens with Demario Bino. Number two is Lady Cop, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds and True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Chavi and Chow. Number three is Diane's Wish, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds and True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Traven Badry. Number four is Danzig Star Storm, owned by Windancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Fraser Abley. Number five is Diamond Grand, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Antonio Whitehall. Number six is Sparkling Silver, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Carl Anderson with Tim Tarasenko. Number seven is I've Got All Night, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Devin Gittens with Siobhan Bell. Number eight, the Comrie Rule was scratched. Number nine is Where's the Pumps, owned by King Couture, trained by Jared Brown 
is Arthur Badu. Rounding out the field is number 10, Silver Creek Lady. Owned by Gary Naherniak, Rihanna Gray, Dave Ledoux, and Damon Gillis. Trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Cabeno. Classic high five wagering. Here in race number seven, they'll go to post in approximately three minutes. Gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number six, we had two claims to report. First off, claim for $5,500 was number two club champ, claimed by Courtney Ross, owner-trainer. Also claimed for $5,500 was number five lab rat, claimed by Monique Goulet, trainer Will Toronto. Gentlemen, some great news. Jockey Sven Balrup is back in the jocks room. A little worse for wear, but not too bad. But great news. Jockey Sven Balrup is back on the ground. Okay, and so we've got the girls going six furlongs, uh, closing it out in a field of nine horses. It's a tough field. There is a big favorite, but let's uh, let's start with a bit of a price horse. This horse has had a bit of trouble last time. Is sitting on a win, hasn't won yet this year, but has that closing kick. If there's a battle early, she can close late, and six to one's a more than fair price. The favorite's going to be the two. She deserves to be the, the favorite. Three to five is a little bit low. She has been running great uh, the last three races. Repeat puts her there. And then the six horse, uh, one this can beat, beat many of these last time coming off at big odds. You're getting pretty good odds in here. Wide open race. Let's go 4 2 6 to close it out. Kurt. That's, I think it's wide open too. I went to number five, Diamond Grand. Has run very well sprinting, sitting off the pace. There could be a lot of pace in this race. So it could set up for one of those horses to come just off it. Ran a good third last time out. Gary Gorno and Antonio Whitehall absolutely on fire tonight. Lady Cop, as you said, deserves to be the favorite. But this is not an easy race. She should get a good trip on the inside. And number seven, I've got all night. The debut was spectacular. Kind of a rough trip in the Manitoba Oaks. And last time... Even though it didn't make the lead stuck around, I like that in speed horses. So I'm going to give you a 5, 2, and 7. Good luck here in race 7.
Russian Pearl leads the three-year-old Phillies into the starting gate for the nightcap. Lady Cop, the four to five favorite, steps up and in. Diane's Wish is next. Danzig Star Storm ready to move in. Next up, Diamond Grand. Sparkling Silver is in. I've got all night also in. Just two left to load. Where's the pumps? And just waiting on Silver Creek Lady. Set there at the post. And they're off. From the middle, Sparkling Silver. Showing good early speed. Matched on the outside by I've Got All Night, who now goes on by and grabs the early advantage to the far outside. That's where's the pumps, Lady Cop. She's coming up the rail in between horses. Danzig Star Storm with Sparkling Silver settled back in six is Russian Pearl with Silver Creek Lady on the outside and the trailer is Diamond Grand 22 and one the opening quarter and I've gone all night with the lead by a length to the outside where's the pumps Lady Cop on the rail making a move five wide that's russian pearl with sparkling silver they hit the head of the lane and it's i've got all night with the lead on the far outside here comes russian pearl with a big late charge russian pearl lady cop is gonna try and get there but to no avail i've got all night battling back but russian pearl's gonna take it i've got all night in second Third's going to go to Lady Cop, and fourth, the Sparkling Silver. The stewards have requested a photograph to determine the winning horse. They went the opening quarter 22 and 1, the half 46 seconds. Five furlongs, 59 and 2. Time for the six furlongs, 113. Photo show number one, Russian Pearl gets the win. Second goes to number seven, I've Got All Night. Third to number two, Lady Cop. Fourth to number six, Sparkling Silver. And fifth to number four, Danzig Star Storm. Gentlemen, we have a rider's objection. Here in race number seven, please hold all tickets. Kevin Chow aboard number two, Lady Cop, has claimed interference against number seven, I've Gone All Night, and jockey Siobhan Bell. Now entering the winner's enclosure.
a winner here in race number seven. That's number one, Russian Pearl. Russian Pearl is a dark bay around Philly, three years old, by Nonios, out of the mare Russian Jewel, by Wildcat Air. Owned by Larry Falloon and Ron Wiley, trained by Devin Gittens, and ridden out of his victory by Demario Bino. Time for the six furlongs, one thirteen. One Russian Pearl was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Larry Falloon and Dennis Huberto. Ladies and gentlemen, after reviewing the films, the stewards have disallowed the claim of foul. One, seven, two, six, and four will now become official. Well, now head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level. Beer, shots, and wine, 475 and 25% off all appetizers. Racing resumes. Next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7.30. See you then. For those on hand, head up to the clubhouse for Crazy Hour.
gentlemen, here's the objection tape from race number seven. Pay special attention to the seven horse. That's the one in the lead in orange and the one in white. That's number two, Lady Cop and Chavian Chow. The objection was two on seven. This is the pan shot. You can let it roll from here. And after reviewing the films, the Stewart's decision was no change was warranted. 